I'm sick of overly simplistic future wannabe designs. Oh, look how futuristic this is. I tried less. I deleted features, then locked it behind a paywall, so pay me more. Kiss my f***ing ass if this is the future. Make cars still look like cars. I'm sick of this trend to make the dumbest looking oversized kitchen appliance. You know things are bad when Hyundai of all companies has got it going. I hate that if you lower an Ionic, it actually looks pretty cool. If they make a smaller hatchback version, it actually sell like hotcakes. The end vision is stunning, passionate, and brings some soul, even if it's masquerading. Like I said, whisk me away, ease me into the upcoming pain. If we're going electric, delude me. Delude the already schizophrenic me more than my Billify can drown while the dopamine can still arrive. The future of cars is to go back. Whether it's neoclassic motorcycles, remastered video games, or retro styling, the market has shown time and time again some of the best appealing products have already been made, already existed, and simply needed an update in hardware, polish, and repackaged in a manner where the new generation can appreciate it. It's no secret the era of ICERs or internal combustion engine racers will come to an end. So at the very least, if companies are going to move forward towards the future, it wouldn't hurt if they'd let us, just for a moment, relive the past one more time. If they can ease us into the future technology with retro designs, capturing lines, and polished drives, I wouldn't be nearly as scared or absolutely terrified. Cheap, classic, and somewhat simple, but not so much to the point that it's insultingly lazy. The Honda E is an affordable electric car, as should be. Miss me with that Nissan Leaf. Like, sure, I respect it. But the Honda E, I'll elect it. Take my vote. Give me something a little more bespoke. Something that's not a total bore fest to look at. Something that's a total snooze to drive. Who the hell decided that just because something is new, it needs to be as egregiously boring as possible? That in order to be futuristic, it needs to be shiny, white, curvy, and devoid of interesting lines. Maybe that's the real reason no is buying into this electric revolution, the hybrid solution, the hydrogen resolution. Maybe none of us actually have a problem with any of the above, but we're just struggling to find anything for our eyes to love. Just give me a car that looks like a car. Why is that so hard? Stop trying to reinvent the wheel. You already reinvented everything else around it. The engine is gone, the noise removed, the soul deleted, long gone and yeeted. But at least fool me with the way it looks. Show me that it can still be a car. Give me a grill. I know it's not real. No oil to cool, but maybe Maybe smack a heat sink if you have to. Give me shiny LEDs, cyberpunk curves, vaporwave lines from the 80s back to the 60s, heck, draw from the 90s forward into the 2010s, the best car designs that sold then can still sell well beyond expectations again. If the 2005 Mustang taught us anything, it's that retro revivals still work. And even aside from cars, if you booted up Resident Evil 4, you'd say, man, what a great game, but you and I, we remember those times. The new generation scoffs at the way it looks, they can't find the older hardware can't stand the lower frame rates. Truth be told, time changes. So when you remaster it and send it their way, they'll play it and love it the same, just like you and I. They'll hold such a warm memory of the remake, all while still paying homage to the original. We can feel a connection with people who've never even grown up with the original, who may not even been alive back then, but can still love the same piece of art, the same experience, even over this generational divide. The Mustang S197 was that for the car world. Take a look at the old 1965, take a look at the brand new 2005, they didn't look that bad. Then when you look at this 550, you might have to squint a bit to see where it carried along, but it's still there, you know? But what really makes me sad about this is Ford really doesn't even make cars anymore. They just make SUVs, yet the Mustang still survives. It's still available for sale, proof that maybe this retro design still kept it alive. The motorcycle market milks retro bikes, an often thought to be dead trend in a mere 10 years when it first came out, yet it still finds itself more than trudging along, with more and more riders going strong and more and more companies rewinding time. Trying to capture what we felt back then and selling it to us again, sure you could see this as lazier than the appliance approach, but as I said with the video game example, what's old can still be new. And you don't just re-release it, you give added polish, you refurbish, you even resto mod it. Give it those fancy GPSs, the brand new technology, added safety features, but leave that soul, the ruggedness, the things that people actually want to care to experience. Let's be real. If six-year-olds have already accepted iPads and still use Facebook and boot up the internet, they won't be too mad if you give them a brand new gauge that has more technology hidden into it. Sure, they may not use all the features, but a young person will absolutely appreciate it. But if you keep the core features, that's what captures them. And that can absolutely work with cars as well. Sure, it's, it's absolutely daunting when you realize we're teetering on the edge of a new era, watching technology that we've become so deeply ingrained with suddenly being demonized, vilified, and told you're some relic of time. 
holding on to a feeling that so distinctly reminds us of what we truly believe defines the drive. This is what a car is, this is what a car has been, this is what we've gotten used to a car being, but this isn't what a car has to be, this isn't where a car will end up heading, not least in the next century. It's tragic, it's hard, but maybe this is how horse owners felt when cars first came by, knowing that in due time they'd leave old Betsy behind. So again, dearest car companies, I ask of you, no I beg you to delude me one more time, more than my own mind, have us suckered along, living for the old, trying to find the gold, show us a supercharged sedan, not a single executive board member, ask for it, but don't give a damn about some corp in a suit, trying to sell me the same goddamn SUV for the 10 millionth time, not so as long as you still have some crazy engineers, still bold enough, filled with enough guile, sheer cunning, to just say, hey yo, f it, take this damn ride. I promise he'll still make you feel alive just this one last time. Even if Dodge makes something completely unalive, all out of corporate oblige, I can't blame them for just trying to survive. Look at the demon, the Hellcat. You can't say they haven't tried. If anyone has been trying their best to ignore the stupid mantra, the classroom assignment, of becoming more environmentally friendly, it's the moronic frat boy that is the entire company of Dodge. And I love that absolute energy. Even with the EV Challenger coming up, at least they didn't insult my eyeballs by trying to make it look overly curvy and want to be futuristic like some shiny porcelain toilet like all these other annoying ass con we've already talked about this i already told you i'm sick of this future wannabe bullshit like I said, fool me, delude me, but maybe not to the point where you put on fake speakers because even my head and all the voices inside can still hear it's just not quite right. But if you take a deep breath, stand back and let yourself not fall into one of the stupid divides, subtract the politics, the bureaucrats, the corpos, just look at the car long enough and you'll still realize it's still quite fine. If I opened my garage and saw this design, I'd still probably find it divine. It'd probably trick me long enough for me to still feel satisfied, at least long enough to carry me to the end of my life. In truth, this video might be more for you than it is for me. Performance cars seem to be fleeting from us. In terms of price, production, and legislation completely bearing down on them, it's hard to think about, but it's not going to just entirely disappear. Just shift from what we knew about them. Something many of us are still struggling to accept. Every time I feel cars are constantly escaping me, I find myself going back to somewhere I know time may freeze. At least, maybe for another 25 years. Even so, it's saddening to think about, but hopeful to know it won't be all pain. Pierce the skin, inject the needle, and push the drug and slowly and maybe with enough time, more of us than we realize will come to accept the future of the drive. But it's going to have to be one hell of a drug, one great enough to cross the big divide, and for that I'll say what I said at the start, to finally accept the future, it must be repackaged from the past. So sell me another copy of my favorite remastered game, give me another catalog with the retro designs, neoclassic rides, if it's worked there, it'll work here too, just one last time. Thanks for watching. If you love automotive content, car or otherwise, then make sure to subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button to boost my crumbling ego and share this video to your pet chinchilla. Other than that, see y'all next time. Blade Angel out.